Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and on today's video, Getting to Know Eclipse Part 1, we're going to go over the window layout, menu system, and basic navigation of Eclipse for beginners. You can open Eclipse after it's installed by double clicking on the icon from your desktop. In this instance, I have three different versions installed, but I'm going to open our current version release, which is version 9. If you're a brand new Eclipse user, the first time you open Eclipse, you'll be prompted to insert your name. This field is asking for your first and last name, so be sure to provide both names. After filling in your name, you can click Next, and Eclipse will ask you to choose a short name. This is the name that it will call you by. I'm going to go ahead and choose Ashley. That's all there is to get started to open Eclipse. If I close out of Eclipse and reopen version 9, now when I open Eclipse, I can choose the Ashley INI that I just created. And just press OK to open the software. Eclipse is made up of several elements. The first is the title bar. Eclipse will tell you your version number, your username, and if I go to production, open text, and open a file, it tells me my file name. Additionally, as with any other software, I have the option to minimize, maximize, and close the software. I'm going to close this document for right now. The next element of Eclipse is the drop-down menu system. Like most software, Eclipse allows you to access all of its elements via drop-down menu. The file menu is similar to many other softwares where you can open and close files, print files, and import export files, and exit the software altogether. Next is the Recent menu. Recent will show you the files that you have edited recently so that you can continue working on them. For instance, I most recently had a file called Example open, and if I click on Example here, it reopens that file for me. Any file you've worked on recently will be in the recent list and can be accessible to continue editing. The next menu is the production menu. The production menu is how you open files, create files, finish files by checking spelling, filling blanks, and finishing your index, and also how you send files to clients. You can output to printers, ASCIIs, PDFs, or you can deliver multiple types of files at once. The production menu allows you easy access to note files, text files, and dictionaries in one place. The move menu contains all the movements you can do while you're in a document. Right now I don't have a document open, so all of these options are grayed out. I'll go ahead and go to production, open text again, and I'll open my example file. And now if I go to move, all of these options are available. The Move menu is a great one to refer to to learn the keystrokes to navigate Eclipse. All drop-down menus in Eclipse will show you the keystroke for the associated command to the right of the command. The Move menu is broken up into three basic categories. The first category is Basic Movements. The next category are Scans, which allow you to scan to particular types of text. And the next category is Find, which allows you to find specific text locate the next instance of that text, or locate the previous instance of that text. The Edit menu allows you to perform various editing actions. Like the Production menu, you can also open text files from this menu. You can toggle hyperkeys, add dictionary entries by globaling them or adding them directly to your dictionary. You can unglobal, insert various items like print commands and tabs, delete items either by character, word, or even paragraph, and there are miscellaneous editing options like punctuation at the end of your paragraphs, toggling case, and converting numbers. There is additionally a macro menu. These macro options can be assigned to particular macros in your macro list under the Edit tab of your user settings. We will do a video about using these macro options in the future. However, the first option here is the macro record function. There is already a video for macro record and I'm going to put a link to that in the top right. Macro record allows you to record a macro steps by performing those steps on your keyboard. The edit menu also contains undo, escape, and redo commands. Next is the block menu. 
Block allows you to select text in your document. If I select mark, it will begin marking my text and I can use my arrow keys or my page up and page down or even control page down to highlight text. And in addition, once I've turned marking on, I can use the move commands under block to continue the marking as well if I'd rather not use my keyboard. Once text is marked, I can cut or copy that text or write or separate that text. The format menu contains again three groups of options. First allows you to format the text. Next allows you to format your paragraphs. And last allows you to format things like spacing and quoting. The tools menu is broken up into three groups. The first group are real-time tools. These are used while, generally while you're in real time, although the multimedia tools are often used out of real time when you're playing back audio. We already created a audio sync for beginners video and I'll put a link to that in the top right. There are also commands for voice users and captioning users in this grouping of options. The next group of options are the options that allow you to control your files. You can open the file manager and we have created a video series about all of the file manager functions. I'll put a link to that in the top right. You can back up and restore files as well as convert files. If you're a convenience key user, you'll be familiar with the convenience key media, but if you only have one key or you're a keyless user, you don't need to worry about this function at all. The last group of options allow you to utilize tools to get information about your documents to perform better in the future. You can analyze documents to find words that aren't in your dictionary and use those analyzed documents to build your dictionary. You can get timekeeper reports about your document. You can access your job variables and job report to get information about your print commands. The window menu allows you to control the look of your screen. New window will create a copy of the file you already have open. Cascade will cascade the files that you have open. I'm going to open another file just as an example. And I will go to Window and Cascade again. And you see that I can toggle between both files. I can choose Window and Tile and it will tile the files horizontally. But if I go to Window and Tile again, it will tile the files vertically. I can use Full Screen or F11 to toggle Full Screen Mode. And if I only have one file open, I can do split and split my file in half. This allows me to navigate to different areas of the same document in different parts of my screen. Switch panes will switch me to different parts of my split window. And switch utilities is generally a command used only by macros. The view menu allows you to toggle on and off elements of your display, such as the note bar. Right now my note bar is on, however if I click view note bar, my note bar will toggle off. I can go back to window, view, and view note bar to toggle my note bar back on. View toggles is also an easy way to toggle different display elements on and off. I can turn my note bar on and off with a click of a button, or I can turn on and off additional toolbars at the top of my screen. Last in the window menu is the option to customize the toolbars at the top of your screen as well as your display properties. These display properties are temporary and for this job only. If you want to permanently change your display properties, you'll want to do that by going to your user settings and to the display tab. The last option in the window menu is the select option. This allows you to use your mouse to select options from the info bar on the left. You can, however, also just click on the options there. These options are typically used with macros. The last drop-down menu is the support menu. We made an entire video series about the support menu and I strongly recommend that new users give that a watch. I'll put a link to it in the top right. That covers the drop-down menus. Just to go over it quickly once again, production allows you to open, create, finish, and deliver your files. Move allows you to navigate through the document. Edit allows you to change your document. 
Block allows you to select to copy, paste, or separate your document. Format allows you to format the font or paragraphs in the document. Tools allows you to control your software. You can control your files, get information about your files, and control what's happening within real time. The window menu allows you to control the way Eclipse looks and handle multiple files while they're open or customize your display. The support menu will teach you everything that you need to know about Eclipse and allows you to find help anytime on any topic. Now that we've covered the drop down menu, the next element of the screen is just the toolbars. You can customize the toolbars through Window and Customize Toolbars. However, by default, these are the options that you'll get, and you can use any of these options simply by clicking on the toolbar option. There's even a link directly to the manual, and this will bring up the list of all of the PDFs, including the Eclipse User's Manual. On the left of your screen, you'll see the info bar. The info bar contains statistically likely edit suggestions. These suggestions will change based on the type of word that you're on. Right now, it provided me an option of just a misspelling to now, or based on my steno, a misstroke of when he. If I move to the word service, those options will change. Every time I move to a new word, the options that I get will change. And the options will also change based on if my word is in all caps, it gives me the option to hyphenate that spelling or separate the spelling. And if I put my cursor on a conflict or untranslate, I'll get options appropriate to, appropriate to conflicts or untranslates. To use the options in the info bar, you can simply hit the keystroke listed to the right of it or hit the number listed to the left of it. In this instance, I'm going to go ahead and hyphenate the word Google. There's no keystroke for that listed to the right, so I'm just going to hit number two on my keyboard and it automatically hyphenates that word for me. Now that I'm on the word translate, which is also in all caps, it's given me the option to hyphenate that word as, all, as well, and I can simply hit one to hyphenate that as well. Now that I'm on a non-capped word, it's given me more standard editing commands. I can global this, turn it back into steno, or start a new paragraph or any of these other options. And just like in the drop-down menus, in the info bar, the, if there's an appropriate keystroke, it'll be listed to the right-hand side of that command. When you have a document open, the right-hand side of the document is typically dedicated to the note bar. And there are note bar options under Settings, Display, and Note Bar Options. You can also right-click in the note bar to get these options, but if you right-click in the note bar and change these, these will only be changed for this job so do keep that in mind. At the bottom of Eclipse is the status bar. The status bar gives you information about whatever type of document you're in. Since I'm in an ECL file right now, a translated document, it tells me the total number of pages, the page that I'm on, as well as the line number that I'm on on that page, and the column that my cursor is on, left and right. And so if I put my cursor on the beginning of this word, the column is listed at 15, so I know that that paragraph type is indenting 15 spaces. Next in the status bar are time codes. Because of the way I created this document, it doesn't have time codes, but I have another document that does have time codes, and you see that at the bottom. You can see the time codes represented. The time codes will be represented in 24-hour time. Additionally, to the right of the time codes are various indicators about your document. This will indicate whether you are in, in insert or overtype mode, whether you're connected to the server, and whether things like number lock are enabled. You can find more information about all of the codes that may be present in the status bar in the manual of Eclipse. The contents of the status bar will change depending on what type of file you're in. These are the kinds of contents you'll get while you're in an Eclipse translated file or an ECL file. If I open up a note file, You'll see that at the bottom, there's less information in the status bar. However, much of that information is actually within the note file itself. My time codes are stored within the note file. The steno notes themselves are stored within the note file. And the stroke count and fold count are listed at the bottom of the note file just above the status bar.
if I close out of the note file and open up a dictionary, my options at the bottom again have changed. Now I am given the count of my dictionary, which is currently 59,112 entries. And if I select a file, I'm told which number of my total entries that entry is. As you cycle through the dictionary, that number will increment as you select different entries. Date and time information relative to your dictionary entries is available within the dictionary itself, and so is not stored or located on the status bar. This wraps up our Getting to Know Eclipse Part 1 video. This video is intended as a way for new users to get to know where to find certain information in Eclipse, and in future installments in this series, we will go over how to start real time, how to read notes, how to format documents, and how to make dictionary entries and other beginner items like that. Please keep an eye out for more videos in this series. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you will come back and watch the rest of the series about getting to know Eclipse. As a reminder, Advantage Software offers anytime support 24-7. Please contact us at 772-288-3266 anytime, including weekends and holidays, if you have questions about Eclipse or any of Advantage Software's other great products. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying our content, please subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we publish new videos. Please like our videos if you're enjoying them. Thank you so much and have a great day.